they just hated him because he was perfect and righteous and they they had their man's way they wanted to go with so or they just didn't want to hear it one or the two um but he he also told them that in all these things all these things had to come to pass so that the word might be fulfilled written in their law and then toward the end of chapter 15 he reminded them that the comforter or the helper the same thing as the helper would come the spirit of truth and testify of him and I don't know about you but aren't we glad to have the comforter the Holy Spirit living inside of us to lead us and guide us into all truth um, you know they were close to him physically but they hadn't experienced having his spirit live in them yet so that's an even closer intimate relationship so I'm so thankful for that and so after he you know went over all this with them and prepared them for what was going to happen um, if you look in verse I'm sorry chapter 16 of John we're just going to kind of read through it because chapter 17 is really the one that I want to talk about tonight um, but in chapter 16 it says these things have I spoken to you that you should not be offended and that word offended means made to stumble. They shall put you out of the synagogues. Yes, the time comes that whosoever kills you will think that he does God's service. And these things will they do unto you because they have not known the Father nor me. But these things have I told you that when the time shall come, you may remember that I told you of them. And these things I said unto you at the beginning because I was with you. But now I go my way to him that sent me, and none of you ask me, Whither goest thou? But because I have said these things unto you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is expedient for you that I go away. For if I go not away, the Comforter will not come unto you. But if I depart, I will send him unto you. And when he is come, he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father and you see me no more. Of judgment, because the prince of this world is judged. I have yet many things to say unto you, but you cannot bear them now. Howbeit, when the Spirit of truth is come, he will guide you into all truth. For he shall not speak of himself, but whatsoever he shall hear, that shall he speak. And he shall show you things to come. He shall glorify me, for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father has are mine, therefore, said I, that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Then some of the disciples among themselves, or they said among themselves, What is this that he's saying to us? A little while we shall not see him, and again a little while we shall see him. And because I go to the Father, what's he talking about is what they were saying. And then verse 18, 18, it says, They said, therefore, what is this that he saith? A little while, we cannot tell what he said. Now Jesus knew that they were desirous to ask him and say unto him, because he knows everything, right? <laughs> he knows what we're thinking. And then Jesus said, Do you inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while, and you shall not see me, and again a little while, and you shall see me. Verily, verily, I say unto you that you shall weep and lament, but the world shall rejoice. And you shall be sorrowful, but your sorrow shall be turned into joy. A woman, when she is in travail, has sorrow, because her hour is come. But as soon as she is delivered of the child, she remembers no more the anguish for joy that a man is born into the world. And you know, therefore, and you now how, therefore have sorrow, but I will see you again, and your heart shall rejoice, and your joy no man takes from you. Amen. <laughs> And in that day you shall ask me nothing. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall ask the Father in my name, he will give it to you. Hitherto have you asked nothing in my name? Ask, and you shall receive, that your joy may be full. These things have I spoken unto you in Proverbs, but the time comes when I shall no more speak unto you in Proverbs, but I shall show you plainly of the Father. And that day we shall, you shall ask in my name, and say not unto you that I will pray the Father for you. For the Father himself loves you because you have loved me and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father and come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. And then his disciples said unto him, Lo, now speakest thou plainly and speakest no proverb. Now are we sure that thou knowest all things and needest not that any man should ask thee. By this we believe that thou camest forth from God. 
And Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? Behold, the hour, yes, is now come that you shall be scattered, every man to his own, and shall leave me alone. And yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. These things I have spoken unto you, that in me you might have peace. In the world you shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer, I have overcome the world. And so what I see here is, you know, Jesus is so personal and compassionate for his people that he took the time, you know, to tell them, this is what's going to happen, but it's okay. You know, I'm with you. I'm The comforter's coming, and I'm with you. You're going to be with me again one day, and in this world you're going to have trouble, but be of good cheer because he, he is about to overcome the world. <laughs> He was telling them right before he was about to go overcome the world on the cross. So, you know, that's just like our God to minister to us. Knowing that they were sorrowful, knowing that they didn't understand, he took time to share the truth with them, and then he even explained when they didn't understand. So that's the kind of God that we serve. Amen. And so chapter 17 is kind of really where I wanted to land. Um, but I wanted to, you know, give that uh, preface to it. So Jesus goes into chapter 17 right after sharing with them, telling them what was coming, what was going to happen, and that they were going to be persecuted and just to hold on by your faith because, you know, he was going to take care of them in the spirit. <clears throat> And then he goes over into praying for them. And this is the most beautiful chapter to me, to me over the last year that I've read of Jesus praying for his disciples. And we know that, you know, he sits at the right hand of the Father, ever interceding for us. And we know that um, he's an ever-present help in time of trouble. So um, we're just going to read this chapter, and I'll just, I may stop a few times, but I just kind of wanted the Lord to encourage you in this chapter tonight. I'm not a preacher, <laughs> so you're probably not going to get that. But I do love the Lord, and I do love his word, and he ministers to me through it. And I just wanted to share the encouragement he gave me, pass it on to you. So um, chapter 17 says, um, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy son. And thy son also may, be glor may glorify thee, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. And this is life eternal. This is one of my favorite verses. That they may know you, the only true God, in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. That is what life eternal is. That's the, that's the way to have it. <laughs> he tells us right there in that one verse that they may know you, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom they've sent. And, of course, we know he came to die for us, and that's what that's meaning. We know that's who he is. <clears throat> so in verse 4, it says, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gave me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Because we know Jesus has always been. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gave me out of the world. Thine they were, and thou gavest, me the, gavest them me, and they have kept thy word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. For I have given unto them the words which thou gave me, and they have received them, and have known surely that I came out from thee, and they have believed that thou didst send me. I pray for them. I pray not for the world. And that really stuck out to me when I read that, you know, before he's about to go to the cross and his just love for the disciples and people that believed on him. And he loves the world, too, and I don't mean it that way, but just thought this was interesting that he said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world because he knew he was about to leave them and they were going to have struggles. But he said, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine and all mine are thine and thine are mine and I am glorified in them. And now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. And I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through thine own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. While I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name, 
Those that thou gave me I have kept, and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. And now come out of thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. I have given them thy word, and the world has hated them, because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. I pray not that thou should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. And this verse really spoke to me, too, because, you know, we're still here. We're among the evil. <laughs> it's all around us. And, um, and the reason I think, you know, Jesus was praying for them that, um, you know, that because he knew he was leaving them and what they were going to face, and he wanted them to be strengthened. Um, but, you know, we're left here to tell other people about Jesus. And so I think that's kind of what he meant when he said, you know, I, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that you should keep them from evil because he knew that they were going to minister his gospel to the people that don't know him. In verse 16, it says, They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them through the truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Neither, I, neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word which means us, <laughs> everyone after them that would believe on Jesus by the gospel that they preached. He said, neither I pray for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. You see, the Lord knew us. He's always known us. And before we were conceived in our mother's womb, and <clears throat> that just ministers to me a lot, um, that he was praying for future believers. Because he knows all things. Amen. Verse 21 says that they all may be one as thou, Father, are in me, and I in thee, that they also may be one in us, that the world may believe that thou hast sent me. And the glory which thou gave me I have given them, that they may be one, even as we are one. I in them, and thou in me, that they may be made perfect in one, and that the world may know that thou hast sent me, and thou and hast loved me, and as thou hast loved me. Father, I will that they also whom thou hast given me be with me where I am, that they may behold my glory, which thou hast given me, for thou lovest me before the foundation of the world. O righteous Father, the world has not known thee, but I have known thee, and these have known that thou hast sent me. And I have declared unto them thy name, and will declare it, that the love wherewith thou hast loved me may be in them, and I in them. And I just, I just, I mean, that's just such a beautiful chapter of God's compassion and love. And, and, and of course, if you went on into 18, that's where he goes into the garden, and he's actually taken by the, um, Ju you know, Judas is there, and the band of, um, I guess, Pharisees, those that come to get him. After this prayer, he goes into the garden, and that's where he's taken into captive to be beaten and taken to the cross. So um, just wanted to encourage you tonight as we, you know, um, I mean, we know because of what the Word says that things are, are not going to improve. <laughs> um, they're just going to do what God knows they're going to do. But we're here to share the gospel. We're here to love people. We're here to be an example of who he is. And um, we have that opportunity every day of our life in whatever situation we're in, whether it's work or school or, um, you know, just being out and about or whatever it may be. We have those, those opportunities are always there. And, you know, Jesus said that people would know us by our love. And, you know, sometimes it just means... Um, someone seeing his love through you, and I've had people ask me before or say, Some, there's something different about you, or, um, you know, why would you respond that way, or, you know, just things like that. And I don't always respond right. <laughs> I'm not trying to say that because I don't. Sometimes I think, oh, I hope nobody saw that or heard that. <laughs> but there have been times 
when the, you know, the Lord's moved through me. And I know he has you too as well. I know you've had those opportunities. And um, we just need to be encouraged that God is for us. He's not against us. He's with us. We don't have to fear. He tells us not to fear what's coming um, because he's overcome the world. And we know that our home is with him eventually forever. And just um, a few more scriptures to leave you with um, as we end that kind of go along with this. Hebrews chapter 7. My Bible's falling all apart. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 24 to 25. Um It says, Wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever lives to make intercession for them. For such a high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens. I didn't read the right scripture, did I? Hang on. Verse 24. But this man, because he continues ever, has an unchangeable priesthood. Verse 25. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing that he ever lives to make intercession for them. But he is a high priest, as it says in verse 26, um, who's holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sin, and made higher than the heavens. And we know that. Um, And then Romans chapter 8, verse 16 through 33. Romans 8, 33 says, Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifies. Who is he that condemns? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also makes intercession for us. And I know we're all thankful. And then um, just one last passage is in Psalm 46. It will be our last scriptures. Um, Psalm 46. We'll start in verse 1, uh, Greg. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Psalms 46 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her in that right early. Then the heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice and the earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come behold the works of the Lord. What desolations he has made in the earth. He makes wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear the spear in sunder he burns the chariot in the fire be still and know that i am god i will be exalted among the heathen i will be exalted in the earth the lord of hosts is with us the god of jacob is our refuge amen you see how many times it repeated that god is with us and he is our refuge we can hang on to that amen Father, we just thank you, Lord, for your word and your truth. And God, we thank you for your promises. Lord, we thank you for being faithful to your covenant to us. And Lord, your promises to us. And God, just your long suffering with us. God, we thank you for your love and compassion toward us. And Lord, we even thank you for rebuke and um, correction because we know by your word that. You love those, you, you correct those that you love. And so we know when we're corrected that we're being loved by you and it's for our good. And Lord, you know best, you know all things. And Lord, you are our good shepherd. God, you know how to take care of us. Lord, you know how to draw us back in. You know how to lead us and guide us. 
into the righteous path that you have for us, God. And we just thank you for being such a good God. We thank you for saving us. Lord, we give you praise tonight for our salvation, for keeping us, Lord, and for drawing us, Lord, to yourself. We honor you tonight, God, in this place. We praise your holy name. We magnify you, Jesus, for you are high and lifted up. And, Lord, we don't have to fear because you are in control and we are hidden in you. And we know that in you we're going to be taken care of, Lord, in the eternal things, God. And that's what matters the most. And we just love you, Lord. Hallelujah. Just praise him. Worship him. If you have a need tonight, you can um, come to the altar and uh, we can pray for you. Or you can just spend some time alone with the Lord. Um, He's able to minister to you.